Just like most of you all, I grew up watching my fair share of TV. I started watching WWF, well, now WWE, when I was about six years old. I vividly remember watching The Undertaker on TV with a friend of mine. Taker was on TV, he was in the middle of the ring, and he said, well, I'm gonna do a bad impersonation, so please bear with me, but he said, I gave you the opportunity this past Sunday, and you blew it. And I'm sitting there in front of the TV like, yeah, Taker, you tell him, he totally blew it, he. Wait, what did he just say? Did he say opportunity, as in opportunity? I thought it was opportunity, as in opportunity. Also, Sunday, I thought it was Sunday. Am I hearing things? Dude, what is in this Pepsi? What did you do with it? Turns out I was not hearing things. See, as a kid growing up in India, watching this international content taught me that words could be pronounced in different ways in different parts of the world. That there's this thing that the elders called an accent. I was also a huge fan of Cartoon Network back in the day. Always found it entertaining. But after that discovery, what was only entertaining also became educational. From watching global content, I also learned that sometimes, despite all the talent and hard work, despite all the privileges and prophecies, life might end up being very different from what we'd hoped for. Now, what fictional character do you think taught me that? If you're thinking that I was watching something like Rocky, Great guess. I'm a huge fan. In fact, I'm a Rocky stan. But right now, though, I am talking about Vegeta, the prince of all saints. In the popular Japanese anime Dragon Ball Z, the transformation that Vegeta has from being a villain to an anti-hero to a hero is nothing short of an inspiration. Now, some of you may have no idea what I'm talking about. That's totally fine, that's totally fine. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, in which case, I see you all. And right about now, there might be a few folks that are going, ew, cartoons, really? That's for kids, Sid. Well, there's a slight difference between anime and cartoons, but never mind. <laughs> so, Rocky, and Dragon Ball Z. Two different sources with the same kind of message, and yet, the regular looking film, the non-anime content is considered to be a classic, it's timeless, but on the other hand, anime is often disregarded for looking childish. Over the years, as I grew older, I realized and understood that there's this feeling that our media consumption could sometimes be very one-dimensional. And I'm not talking just about anime. Another good example of this is content with subtitles, content in languages that we don't necessarily know or understand. Like I said, I grew up in India. I used to watch all this regional content, regional Indian content. I know, by the way, speaking of a one-dimensional perception and speaking of regional Indian content, Bollywood is not Indian cinema. Just Bollywood is not Indian cinema. There's Collywood, Mollywood, Tollywood, Sandalwood. I can go on and on, but all of these film industries put together make Indian cinema, not just Bollywood, FYI, putting it out there. But hey, getting back, I used to watch all these regional Indian movies in all sorts of languages, and I would go to my friends and recommend uh, these movies to them, and oftentimes these would be in languages that they didn't necessarily know. You know, that's what a good friend does. You watch something cool, you think it's fun, you recommend it to your friends, right? So I would go tell them, hey, you gotta check this out. You gotta check this movie out. And they would hit me with a, uh, do I have to read subtitles, dude? Do they not have a dubbed version? I don't know, Sid, I'll think about it. And you, you know when people say they'll think about it, they are not gonna do it, right? Well, it is what it is. <laughs> Over the years, I've realized that sometimes we tend to get too hung up on how a story is being told, when we should be focusing on what is being told and what we can take away from it. 
Not too long ago, Netflix did a survey to really understand their customers better. And after this survey, they came out and said that the appetite for TV shows made outside of Hollywood in languages other than English is very high all over the world, except one place. A very high percentage of US viewers do not want to watch any content in languages other than English. It was a depressing survey result, so we ignored the whole survey, is what they said. By choosing not to watch content that we're not familiar with, we are missing out on learning. While we wait for accurate ethnic representation in mainstream media, we tend to forget the fact that authentic stories are still being told, stories that we can all learn from, stories that we can all enjoy. We just have to look a little further, but we choose not to. But I get it. At the end of the day, anime is not for everyone. International content is not for everyone. And I don't think, in fact, I know that this is not a problem unique to the US either. But here's the thing, though. The world right now is more connected than it has ever been before. And yet, we seem to be surrounded by all these problems that stem from a lack of understanding, a lack of respect, and a lack of empathy towards different cultures. And if it's already not the case, all of us are going to be studying with, working with, and living among people from all over the world. All of us will have to become global citizens pretty soon. We have to have a global mindset. We have to have the ability to look at the world through a lens that's not our own. And for that, we have to remain curious. We have to keep learning more and more about each other. Not all of us are going to be able to live abroad and learn from those experiences. Not all of us are going to be able to study at or work at a very diverse place either. There's a lot of emphasis on learning through travel. You often hear people say things like, hey, I traveled to 53 countries in two years, so you can too. Fam, first of all, how did you get that many days off? <laughs> Teach me that first. We can talk about the travel part later. You often hear people say things like, hey, air travel has never been so cheap. All you have to do is just get on a flight and you'll be fine. Well, debatable, but keeping the money part aside, there's this teeny tiny complication that people tend to forget called a visa. Depending on where you're from, getting a visa for one foreign country might mean hours and hours of research, a ton of paperwork, a bunch of trips back and forth to the visa consulate just to get your visa stamped. Not all of us have the privilege of having a powerful passport. All of that for one country, let alone 53 in two years. So not all of us are going to be able to learn from traveling. But what most of us do have access to are TV shows and movies. In February 2020, the director of Parasite, Bong Joon-ho, during his acceptance speech for Best Picture, said, if we can all overcome the one-inch barrier of subtitles, all of us will be introduced to many more amazing films. And I sat there in front of the TV like, my man, he is speaking the truth. And it's unfortunate that somebody had to go out there and make an Oscar-winning movie for that message to be taken seriously all over the world. Four Oscars, in fact. That was February 2020. And then COVID hit. All of us had to find our own ways to deal with lockdowns and whatnot. And one of my ways to deal with my lockdown situation was just to watch content from all over the world, TV shows and movies from all over the world. And over the past two years, I've watched about 120 movies in 17 or 18 languages that I don't, I don't know much. I've had a chance to recommend these movies to hundreds of people. I've made a lot of friends. I've started an international films club at work. And I've learned a little bit about other cultures. A while back, I was watching this Korean movie, and there's this kid in that movie. He wants to go outside and play with his friends. So he goes to his mother to ask for permission. He goes, Mom, can I go out and play? And obviously, I'm translating, but he goes to ask for permission, and his mother says, no. And the kid goes, ah, Mom. 
So he's all disappointed, he's dejected. But with puppy dog eyes, he goes over to his dad, goes over to his father to ask for permission. And his father, in a very classic dad manner, says, I don't know, go ask your mom. And the kid goes, oh, ha, 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 And I found that fascinating. And I say fascinating because thousands of miles away in southern India, in my language, Tamar, the words for mother and father were the same, Amma and Appa. Hmm, interesting. So I started doing some research. And turns out that Korean and Tamar, two languages, two cultures seemingly poles apart, apparently have a list of shared words, shared common words. Hmm, interesting. So I started doing some more research, and turns out that there's this legend. And legend has it that several centuries ago, an Indian princess got married to Korean royalty. They had 12 kids. And in present-day Korea, there are millions of people who are descendants of that family. And that's how the language got passed down. That's how the words and the vocabulary got passed down. Hmm. Small world, I thought. Now, I hadn't made any trips. I was in my living room on my couch, sitting in front of my TV, just watching this movie, and I was able to learn a little something about a different culture and my own. Funny how that works, right? Stats say that on an average, human beings apparently spend seven and a half hours each day consuming media. And oftentimes, what we see in the media influences how we see the world. So the idea that I want to share with you today is actually nothing profound. It's, it's very simple, fun, entertaining. I'm just here to tell you all to watch more movies and watch more TV shows. But let's be more intentional about it. Let's be more mindful about it. Now, I can stand here in front of you and, and give you my list of must-watch movies, must-watch TV shows. But you already have those lists on your phone. You have them on your apps. You have them on your TV. You can find these lists online. I am simply here to reiterate the fact that sometimes we tend to get too hung up on how a story is being told when we should be focusing on what is being told and what we can take away from it. Streaming services, all 19 of them, way too many streaming services these days, um, but all these streaming services are here to stay. And they are going to expand globally. And as they expand globally, they are going to make more and more content for their local markets. Local for some, international for the others. And I think that this international content has the ability to create positive relationships between us, the viewers, and the culture. And this positive relationship could help us improve our understanding about the people, their language, their culture their history, their landmarks, so on and so forth. And maybe this type of understanding is hopefully going to be step one towards a more peaceful society. All of us think that it's very cool to be uncomfortable on foreign land when we're on travel. And yet, we hesitate to be uncomfortable within the comforts of our own living rooms because we don't want to watch animation, we don't want to watch anime. We don't want to read subtitles. Let's undo that. Let's make sure that our watch histories are as intentional as our travel histories. We right now live in a world in which there's a lot of emphasis, there's a lot of respect that's put on being well-read, that's put on being well-traveled. I'm hoping that we can all get together as a society and learn and know and understand that there is a lot of value to our society in being well watched. Thank you.